Sunday, we just rolled up to uh, Producers Co-op. Actually, this is part of a new <laughs> pilgrimage, if you will, that we've been doing. Uh, it's about two hours from the house over here in my college station. But we come over here because the goat feed is almost half price of what we get it for uh, retail at the little feed stores around the house. I'm not complaining about them being expensive. I'm just saying it's cheaper to come over here. So we make a trip over here every month or so or every other month or so. We try to make obviously less trips. This time we've got the trailer on. So we're going to try to get nine bags of dairy feed, nine bags um, of meat goat feed, and we'll get three sunflower seeds. So anyway, there's the silos. We got to go in over here into the main store. So you got to buy the feed in here, and then they will get an order ticket over to the guys here in the in the silos in the middle, and they'll bring it out and load it for us. All right, I got about 150 pounds of seed and about I don't know. 60 pounds of kid <laughs> on my cart and then we got these two wrangled up in this cart so they've got uh, this all is the their products that are available with all the prices uh, and got all okay lines. there's the loot as promised one two three to 50 pound black hole sunflower seed and there's three i have to look at the tags one of these is medicated and one's not this is the dx i think is unmedicated oh medicated DX is the medicated, so there's nine of those, and there's nine of the unmedicated. We give the unmedicated to our lactating goats. Uh, it's, it's the same as far as like the protein, the pellet, everything. Just the DX has um, a general medication on it, I think, to prevent like coccidiosis and whatever else. Um, the unmedicated does not, so we're not getting any of the medicine to that. And, best of all, we got to see a train. There was a train parked right here. We didn't even notice it, it was parked there offloading, I guess, and then as we were strapping it down, train started rolling so of course the kids are in the car going nuts but anyway we got um 21 bags of feed here 50 pounds a piece we got just over a thousand pounds of feed on the trailer which i think is about all the trailer can handle legally um we're heading home all right well we just got home with the loot looks like a few things shifted in transit you can see our sunflower seeds here kind of spread out and the other feed sacks fell down through them but we didn't lose any uh, there's the three sacks here on the front and the other six to those across the back. So it's kind of funny. I feel the trailer get more or less squirrely at different times. And I think it's just because we were so perfectly balanced. I mean, this thing, I could basically pick up on it. That was my check. No, pretty balanced. I mean, it was when we left producers, I was able to pick up on the tongue of it. But if I let go, it would drop back down. So it was right out balanced. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of feed here, um, half a ton or so. i got to figure out where I'm going to put it. <laughs> Let's see where we've got space. I'm going to open this conic up because this place gets sweltering. So both those trash cans are basically empty. That's where we keep our mixed feed. This one here has got a little bit of space in it. But I think a lot of these sacks of feed are going to end up back here somewhere on a shelf. I might have to rearrange some stuff to make space. But we had a sack that stayed on the shelf. Oh, speaking of which, I got a whole bunch of sacks of sugar there. So, whoo, I forgot about the sugar. That's where I was going to put the sacks of feed. Great. I'll figure something out. There's a lot of stuff that could be rearranged. Um, but we had a sack of feed that we stored on the shelf for several weeks, and it didn't get any mice in it this time. So we will hope we won't get any mice in them this time because we're going to be storing them um, a lot longer. So hopefully the mice won't find them. If we do, we might have to go invest in some more trash cans or figure out some other plan to store it long term. But anyway, I'm going to, I guess, go in the house. The kids already went in the house, figure out what our plan is. But then I'm going to start doing some work with this and try to get it put away. Oh, OK. I got it all put away anyway for now. I Means you get three bags on a shelf back there. They take up way more space than you think. There's another 10 bags here and another 10 bags there two bags in there mixed one bag in there mixed plus the bag of dairy parlor that was already out and I've got an open bag of sunflower seeds in here and the open bag of lespedeza which was already in there oh excuse me if I had to I could maybe dump a bag loose in there just to fill the voids 
but I don't really want to just because it's a mess. Oh, got it in there, got it mixed. I'm hot, I'm winded. The question is, is it all worth it? And we're about to find out. All right, let's see if I can make sense of this for you guys. This is the best I could do. I don't have a you know, fancy whiteboard like some of the other guys that'll scribble all the numbers down for you. So I'm just gonna walk you through this. This was a little spreadsheet that I made to figure up the actual savings that we, the realized savings that we earned um, by driving all the way over to producers to get this um, uh, more cost-effective feed. So the load that we went and got, we got three loads of, or three bags, I'm sorry, of black oil sunflower seeds, nine bags of the pellet DX, which is the medicated for the meat goats, and nine bags of the lactation pellet, which is basically the same thing as the meat goat pellet, but not medicated. Um, the reason why we get these numbers is because when we mix our feed and we mix the pellets and the black oil sunflower seeds and we mix in the Lespedeza, which we sourced separately, it's effectively a six to one ratio of six bags of either one of these two will consume one bag of sunflower seeds. So here's the prices through producers um, co-op per bag. It's a 50 pound bag. Here's the prices through TSC. Again, 50 pound bag. And you got here your price per pound on each one, which you guys are welcome to pause and study this if you want. Now these are the current prices, which actually I made this spreadsheet like a month ago. I'm just now getting around to making the video. Um, but you know you can verify these yourselves. You can call up producers and ask what their prices is if you're in Texas or call your local feed mill, whatever. Anyway, it all worked out to a total weight of 1,050 pounds, which was not a problem on our little trailer. So now we come down here to our costs. So on the seeds, uh, through producers, we spent a total of just shy of $60. For TSC, it would have been $75, 81 and 142, 81 and 135 respectively. So that here's the total cost if you'd have gotten the feed. Total cost for TSC would have been $352. Total cost for producers is $222. So that's a 37% savings by going to producers. This percentage I think will be effectively the same no matter how big of an order you get but of course the larger the order you get the more that 37% amounts to a dollar sign um, so our total net savings our net difference is $129.24 and this is our averaged out feed cost per pound so we're feeding the goats for 21 cents a pound versus 34 cents a pound but our total savings here, cash savings, 129.24. Now we come over here and we say, okay, well, how much time did we spend and how much mileage? It was 202 miles round trip. And I figured we got 10 miles a gallon because we were pulling little trailer. The wife's expedition probably actually gets like 16 highway. Um, with the trailer, we probably actually got 12 or 13 just because it was more of highway miles. But let's just put it at 10. Um, so we used 20 gallons of fuel at an average cost of $2.85 a gallon. That's what it was at the time. We spent $57.57 um, on fuel, so we still have a savings of $71.67. Now what I did not account for was money spent for lunch. Now we did take the whole family and we all ate lunch, but I modeled this as if you were to go do this as a dedicated feed run, that means whoever's responsible in your household gets up, you know, crack at dawn, while everybody else is still asleep, gets up, hits the road, goes, gets the seeds, and get home. That's the way I modeled it. I didn't figure in for lunch and stop it for a park and all that nonsense. <clears throat> so your total net savings after fuel is still $71.67. Now again, that's with this size order, 1,050 pounds. So if you get less, you realize savings is less. And that's the important thing is you gotta have a way to store this feed at your own place Make it worth it. Only make you know a couple of trips a year. Really stock up when you go. If you do that, you're going to have bigger savings. So in our case, we only saved, or we'll say we still put seventy-one dollars and sixty-seven cents was still our net savings. You could say that's money you didn't spend. It's not really money that you earned, but it's money you didn't spend. And then I said it would have been a net difference of three and a half hours. So I figured if we'd have gone to TSC, the closest TSC to us is about ten miles away. So it is close. But even still, the time to drive there, load all the bags, do all that, <coughs> go through the checkout, everything else, it's going to take you at least an hour. You know, for us, it would have been at least an hour. Whereas to go to producers, yes, it's, you know, 
100 miles one way, but that's pretty fast driving, really. It's, you know, all those back roads, they're 65, 75 miles an hour. God bless Texas. Um, and like I said, if you don't put in here that you're stopping for lunch, you didn't have to stop for gas, none of that. You just hauled over there, got home. So a net difference of three and a half hours. And so you spread this savings across those three and a half hours. We saved $20.50 an hour. And that's what I always am preaching in my videos to you guys, of course, is, you know, really, truly value your time. Don't just say that because you didn't have anything else to do that Saturday morning that your time was free. You know, from a hobby standpoint or whatever, sure, tell yourself that if you want. But this with the goats is very much a business. We treat it like a business. I do the same thing with my bees. You should do the same thing with whatever business you're into. Figure out the value of your time. If we go and get a 2,000 pound order, just guessing here, this should be about $40 an hour. Actually, it's going to be somewhere in between because the fuel is not going to be as much. The fuel is not going to be twice as much. So your savings would be, you know, not twice as much savings. Um, but yeah, whatever. I'd have to run the numbers on that. But the point being, you know, you've got to figure in what's the cost of your time. Because if you found in the end that, of course, you save money on feed, but you spend it all on fuel, that means you would have lost money on your time. So in that case, you would have been better off just to go somewhere local, spend more for feed or whatever, but not spend as much time. So that's that's the sort of decisions you guys have to make. For me, for us, it's worth it. If we get at least a thousand pounds, that's worth it. I always kind of joke that my threshold for uh, you know uh, time that I would have otherwise been doing nothing else, you know, I say at least twenty bucks an hour. Either I earn twenty bucks an hour, or I save or create twenty bucks an hour. Now that's been my years old mantra. Now my goal, honestly, it sounds greedy, but it's a hundred bucks an hour. So if I'm going to go work for somebody else, I want to earn a hundred bucks an hour. If I'm going to create something for myself, I want to try to create a hundred bucks an hour. That's my goal. But 20 bucks an hour, that's a fair goal for, you know, small farm, hobby farm, I think. <clears throat> so anyway, that's it. So probably drag this out a little bit longer than I had to, but there's the numbers for you guys. This was just a basic Excel spreadsheet that I just printed out. So, you know, any sort of task that you're going to take on, any sort of little project that you want to do, I highly recommend you start putting all these numbers on paper because I think you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, it can sneak up on you. So this was worth it. I can tell you things, some things I've done have not been. You think it's worth it because you think you saved a little bit of money. My favorite, I'm going to end with this, is the people who will drive all the way across town or to the next town down the road to save five cents a gallon on gasoline. <laughs> They're like, oh, I saved money on gasoline. And you spent so much time and you probably burn more gasoline just getting there. So I always joke about people that do that. Don't do that. There you go. There's the numbers. It was worth it. If you got a big grain elevator near you and you're feeding a lot of animals, I highly recommend you get over there and don't just go to the local retail place.